I've had a few people ask me to comment on Ethan and Ela of H3H3 Productions and the H3 Podcast because they've gone through some changes lately. And in this video, I'm gonna take a look at it from a mental health perspective, so make sure that you stay tuned. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. So I try to help you out with your mental health and I try to pull some topics from the YouTube community and other things in pop culture, try to teach you how you can improve yourself mentally as well as emotionally. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And speaking of H3H3 H3 Productions, they do their podcast over on Twitch. Did you know that I have a Twitch channel now? You need to head over there right now follow me on there pause this video go follow me on twitch it's just twitch.tv slash the rewired soul real easy stuff but i've been editing videos on there playing video games and talking to all of you and we've had some great conversations so go follow me over there on there all right so those of you who don't know who ethan and Ela are of h3 h3 production so i guess i'll start out by saying like uh just you know me personally so you can kind of understand maybe biases and things like that like I'm not a huge fan. Like, uh, they have, they, they had some funny content and things. I think I mainly heard about them when they were going through this lawsuit for, um, the, some copyright stuff or what is it, fair use. That's what it was. That's when I first heard about them. I watched some of their videos. They're kind of funny. I know he's friends with like iDubs and things like that, but like, it's, he's not like a channel that I'll always watch. I do watch some clips from his podcast. If there's somebody on there that I kind of like, um, like recently Bill Burr was on there. Bill Burr is hilarious. Or like when he had Philip DeFranco on there or Ninja and things like that. So I'll check that out sometimes. But anyways, so. They, they had a comedy YouTube channel and they did a lot of commentary and things like that and people were into that. Well, they've been getting a lot of backlash lately and a lot of people have been saying like, you know, their new stuff is awful. And then there was the app that they just released and I'll touch on that in just a second. All right, but anyways, so one thing that I really wanna point out is that months ago, I think it was earlier this year, Ethan made a video about his depression and why he wasn't really making content. And he was talking about how, you know, he was just depressed. And it's something that I constantly talk to you guys about all the time. Like so many people, so many YouTubers, so many celebrities, they struggle with this because they reach the top of this mountain and they realize that they're still not happy, you know? And then all sorts of psychological things happen. Your brain tells you that you're supposed to be happy. You have the following, you have the money, you have the house, you're, you're financially stable, you get to travel, all these things, but you're still not happy. And that really messes you up. And I, I think I made a video a while back about how Ethan talked about how he's, you know, trying to focus on his mental health now, but I don't really know what that means. Cause he's talked about like, oh, I need to start eating better and exercise. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like him and Philip DeFranco had a good talk. Like Philip DeFranco, for those of you who don't know, he's supported by BetterHelp, much like myself, link down in the description. And basically BetterHelp is online therapy. You know what I mean? And Philip DeFranco is very open and honest about how he, how he does therapy. He talks about he started meditating and things like that. And I haven't seen Ethan really come forward and discuss that stuff. So a lot of Ethan's depression, from what I've seen, not only happened because of the whole fame thing and the money thing and just still not really being fulfilled or satisfied, but also going through the whole lawsuit, I think it lasted a year or longer. And like he got a ton of support, you know, like uh, Philip DeFranco helped raise money to cover their legal fees and they actually won. But that's really, really, really draining, okay? Like going through anything like that, especially like legal battles, like is very draining. I've been fortunate where I don't have to go through that stuff, but I've talked to a lot of people who deal with mental health issues, like it's just draining, all right? So anyways, what I wanna talk about first is the H3H3 content, okay? So he hasn't really posted anything on the YouTube channel except for a video recently, which I'll touch on in a minute, but he's mainly been focusing on his podcast, okay? And here's the thing, all right? Whether or not I like his content, it's kind of the same way I look at Bobby Burns, all right? Like when people are going through their mental health struggles, they gotta figure out what works for them. And this is the same thing for all of you. You gotta find out what works for you. If you're not happy doing what you're doing, go find something else. This could be your career, it could be your hobby, it could be whatever. Like, 
the more people force this stuff, the more depressed you get. And I think that's that's what happened with Ethan. He wasn't happy, he wasn't satisfied doing this commentary stuff anymore um, in a kind of a humorous way. So he's been putting a lot of effort into his podcast. And like for me, even though I'm personally not a huge fan, it's like, you go boy, like do your thing. Like it's what's making him happy right now. It's what's satisfying him. So for any of his long-term fans, I would say like, Give him some time. Maybe he'll return to more of the com uh, comedy commentary stuff. But if not, like this is where his new niche is. Like he enjoys the podcast. He's liking to have conversations with people and discuss things and different topics. Like I, I, I've seen some other videos like talking about how like H3H3 sucks now and you know, da da da. But they were talking down about his opinions on stuff. And like he has these uh, opinions, but he's not well educated on it. And it's like, for me, it's like, who cares? It's his podcast. Like, he's not a political commentator. Like, he's never trying to impose his thoughts onto somebody and saying, you should think this way. Now, there's a big difference, because I was actually talking with my girlfriend about this over dinner, because I feel like I'm contradicting myself, because I talked about how, like, Tana uh, Mojo has this young uh, audience, right, and she does all these things, so you gotta be careful. Like, you are going to influence people. But, like, with Ace 3 Ace 3 like, I would guess that his audience is much older. Like, not much older, like 50, 60, 70 years old, but I'm, I'm guessing like adults. You see what I'm saying? And, and here's the thing too, when it comes to commentary, um, like on a podcast forum or whatever it is, like, you guys, like, you gotta form your own opinions. You know what I mean? Like, people are mad at him because he's not educated and stuff. It's like, uh, we were, so me, my girlfriend, my son and I were eating at Chipotle and I was saying like, you have to take responsibility for that. Like, what if I went to the person behind the Chipotle counter and they started giving me car advice? You know what I mean? Like, it's up to me as the person receiving this information to say, okay, maybe somebody working in a restaurant isn't the best person to get car advice from. You see what I mean? Like, that's our responsibility. We're not designed to just be these mindless zombies and like, who do I follow? Where do I get my thoughts and opinions from? Like, no, that's why I make these videos discussing the community. Like, you guys gotta, you know, take this information and do something with it. Like, same thing with me. Like, I have my own thoughts, opinions, beliefs, and things like that. It's your job as the viewer, as the consumer of this information to filter it, right? Some things I say you might agree with, or you say, oh, some mental health tips that I can try out and stuff. Other things you're like, no, that wouldn't really work for me. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's cool. Like, but you need to form your own opinions on this stuff. So like, as far as Ethan doing his podcast, like, Good for him. I think he's only been doing it for like a year, maybe less. Like, he's gonna get his groove and things like that. And it's just a place where he can talk about his opinions and viewpoints on the world and, you know, different stories in the news and stuff, you know, like whatever. He He's not branding himself as a political commentator. So on that sense of the content he's creating, like I truly believe, you know, his depression was really getting to him and he needed to make some stuff that really fulfilled him. And that is his podcast. Well, now let's talk about his app, okay? So a lot of people were upset. You know, they wanted more, uh, like, uh, content on his actual YouTube channel where he did comedy and all that kind of stuff. So it's been a long time. It's been a long time. I've watched some videos on this. It's been a long time. People have been waiting. People have been asking him for content. And he finally makes content, and it's for a new app, okay? So he made an app. Him and uh, Eli, like, they're the stars of this app. And, you know, people are upset by it because now he's trying to sell you something. Now, I have seen some people who say, like, he's being very hypocritical because there's a lot uh, uh there's a lot of stuff you could buy there's in-app purchases and stuff and they said that it's hypocritical because this is stuff that he always talks crap about about other people like jake paul and logan paul and things like that all right now yesterday my girlfriend tagged me in this tweet from james charles all right and it's actually just something i was just thinking about is is this like it's just so weird to me that people don't they don't understand, like, everybody has bills to pay. You know what I mean? Like, we all have bills to pay. Like, I was telling my girlfriend, like, like, imagine if I didn't do anything. Like, if I didn't have any kind of income stream, like, and you like my content, what if I couldn't pay my internet bill? Well, then I couldn't upload any content that you as a viewer like to watch. Like, there's this real, I don't know, it's just really interesting to me about human nature where we don't want people to make money. Now, my girlfriend was explaining things were a lot different, 
you know, pre-ad apocalypse where it was just YouTube ad money and stuff like that. But things have changed, things have shifted. You know what I'm saying? And like, I'm just, you know, maybe it's because I'm a creator, but just like support the people that you like. And like, whether it's, you know, buying an app uh, or an in-game purchase or like one of their shirts or, you know, uh, supporting them on Patreon, whatever it is, like, that helps them do what they love, which is something that you love too. But if they don't make any income, they can't do that thing. Now, and and this this second half of the video, I'm kind of just getting a little bit more, I don't know, philosophical and things. And, you know, they're just interesting subjects because what we were talking about and discussing was the standard of living. Like, that's where, like, for example, I just showed you that James Charles tweet, right? And that's interesting to me because I look at James Charles, this dude's a millionaire, you know? And it's like, okay, well his standard of living is much higher. So when he's trying to get money, he needs a lot of money to support his standard of living. But as you begin to become successful, your standard of living goes up. So you might start selling more expensive products, you might doing these things to uphold your standard of living. But for me personally, that's why I try to do as many things that are uh, as inexpensive as possible because something I preach to all of you is, I know things won't make me happy. I know that having like a gigantic mansion and a car and things like that, those things don't make me happy. Like I like to travel and stuff like that, you know, that costs money. But like my standard of living, no matter how much I succeed in life when it comes to money, like I don't picture myself like needing this very lavish lifestyle, like a Jeffree Star or a James Charles or anything like that. Like I've often thought about, it, I'm like, what would I even do with like a 10 bedroom house? Like, you know, like maybe, like maybe I could see like a four or five bedroom house, but this is up to you guys. Like, it's just, I really think it's important for the community to really sit back and just like, see where your like thoughts and being upset and your anger is coming from. Like these are creators that you love. Don't you wanna support them to keep doing the thing that they love, which then entertains you or informs you or educates you? You know what I mean? Because if they can't do that, like, the last thing I'll say about this is I was working at a, uh, a rehab center for the last three years. And you know, we were a, a private company, so we took, and we took health insurance. And if you didn't have health insurance, it was insanely expensive. And sometimes somebody's like insurance would run out and they'd have to leave treatment because they couldn't pay for it. But the facility I worked at was pretty cool about like giving people like partial scholarships and stuff like that. But anyways, you'd have the clients yelling at you. And I'm just like, listen, I'm an addict in recovery. I wish that we can let everybody in here for free but if we did that we couldn't keep the lights on you know what i'm saying and like when people get so upset about businesses or companies or brands or people making money it's just it's really a balance between are you trying to take advantage of people or are you trying to sustain this thing that is helping people let's put it that way so it's just something i want you to think about and if nothing else like go out and support a creator that you like i don't even care if it's me like support somebody out there whether it's through patreon or buying some of their merch or whatever it is it helps them do the thing that they love all right but like as far as ethan and ela go like i haven't like fully gone through their app if i'm being honest i haven't even downloaded it but it's like i, I heard somebody say there's like a hundred dollar in-app purchase it's like Okay, that's cool. My son plays Fortnite 24 seven. He used to be in late into Legos. That was costing us a, a ton of money every year. Now he uses all that money in Fortnite. In Fortnite, they have an option for $100 worth of in-game currency. If somebody can afford that, good for them. But like, if you're a business owner, are you just not gonna give somebody that option? Some people want that option. If you can't afford that option, that's cool. There's a reason why I drive a Scion and not a Lamborghini, because I can't afford the Lamborghini option. But anyways, like, a lot of you wanted to know my thoughts on H3H3, and I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments below. And and let me know, like, did it, did it kind of explain things for you, like, with their depression and just kind of changing their creativity and things like that? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. But that's all I got for you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental and emotional well-being. Make sure you click that little round subscribe button and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. And there's also a link to the Rewired Soul merch shop. So if you would like to support me, sign up on Patreon or go grab yourself a shirt or a mug, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.